So I have a question for you. If the new Google leaks are of official stuff, I mean, can you really call them leaks? As yes, we have a ton of official press renders, pricing, and even some wild rumors for what we should expect for Google's event. And even if the iPhone 13 is selling like hotcakes, it looks like iPhone users aren't too excited for it. And we have some updates on the Twitch data breach and Facebook's crash that are rather interesting. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, don't forget to participate in our giveaway with subcase for an iPhone 13 Pro Max and an iPhone 13 in the description. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with uh, data breaches that happened earlier this week, and I hope that Diego changed his password because this one happened to Twitch. On Tuesday, an anonymous user posted an 125 gig torrent link on 4chan, which he claimed had the entirety of Twitch and their commit history. And it was actually true, the torrent did bring the entirety of Twitch TV with their commit history, all of their consoles for mobile, desktop, and video game clients, various proprietary SDK and internal Amazon services used by Twitch, even the creator payouts that date back to 2019 that have some astronomical numbers for the reason why Diego wants to get on Twitch. Heck, the leaker also claims to have some unreleased software that includes a Steam competitor called Vapor from Amazon Gaming Studios, as well as hacking tools used by the company to stress test their own network for security threats. Go figure. Clearly, that one has some flaws. Apparently, the leaker claims this is only part one of the data leak, and uh, so far we have no word from neither Amazon nor Twitch on the breach. If you're a Twitch user, change your password and enable two-factor authentication. We'll keep you posted on any updates. Hopefully, not more leaks. Now, speaking of data breaches, let's talk about some updates on the whole Facebook situation from earlier this week, starting with the crash on Tuesday in which most of their services were down for about six hours. I'm sure you remember. Now, as a matter of fact, Telegram is claiming that over 70 million people signed up for their service in that period of time since WhatsApp was down, which is probably the reason why then Telegram was struggling. Well, on a late night post, Zuckerberg said that uh, there was a disruption to their network traffic that had a cascading effect on the way their data centers communicate, which brought their services to a halt. Facebook also says that the outage wasn't due to a hack or a data leak, and there is no evidence that any user data was compromised. Now, speaking of user data compromises, let's talk about the whistleblower case. On Tuesday, she testified before Congress and showed the documents she gave to the Wall Street Journal. And now we have a response from Mark. In an email sent to Facebook employees, he said that the narrative is being spread to paint a false picture of the company. Right. Also writing that her claims don't make any sense. He also goes on to say that the claims on them pushing content that makes people angry are highly illogical. This memo is available for you guys to see on Zuckerberg's page, and we have a full deep dive over at pocketnow.com about that. And listen, of course things don't make sense to Mark. He'd have to create a tool that was not designed to cater to his own insecurities for it to make sense. But I'm glad that Congress is already considering making legislation, I hope they do, because to a certain degree, that amount of power should not fall in a kid's hands. And I'm talking about you, Mark. Now let's shift gears onto Apple and the iPhone 13 series, believe it or not. It's been almost three weeks since the announcement, and even though the phone is selling pretty well to the point where Apple is struggling to keep with orders, and we assume that that's the reason, it seems that people aren't too excited about it. According to a new Cell Cell report, 64% of respondents feel that the iPhone 13 lineup is uh, not very exciting at all. This poll was conducted among 5,000 United States iPhone users, where only 14.4% users said that it was very exciting, and 21.5% uh, felt that it was somewhat exciting. Now, with all that being said, 23% said that they intend to upgrade to the iPhone 13 model with the smaller 13 Pro being the most popular pick, and the Pro Max following. Now, for those of you saying that the average consumer doesn't really care about ProMotion displays, more than a third of the people willing to upgrade claim that the main reason for their upgrade is the 120 hertz display, and about one fourth of them want to upgrade due to battery life issues, which I've noticed are a huge problem with the 12 series at least. Yes, we're working on more iPhone content, so stay tuned. 
I sort of agree with some of the claims, and if you're coming from an iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, I wouldn't be excited to dump my money on the 13 either, unless you use that trade-in program. It's actually kind of worth it for the amount of money that they're giving you for your old phone, and the upgrade is actually pretty good if you do the math. Now, finally, for the hottest news today, I mean, is there really anything else other than this crazy amount of Pixel leaks uh, for us to cover right now? I mean, the company announced a couple of days ago that their Pixel 6 event will be happening on October 19th, and since then, there's been a ton of stuff coming out. Uh, starting with renders from none other than Evan Blass, where he has a huge gallery of official renders of the 6 and the 6 Pro on his Twitter, and, uh, well, that reveal everything. And, I mean, everything there is to know when it comes to design. We get to see the the different colorways from both variants, screenshots from Android 12 and Material U design, as well as some lifestyle images that they'll use for promo. Now, something very interesting from these images is the camera specifications of the Pixel 6 Pro, confirming that it'll include a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 48 megapixel telephoto. But moving on from these renders, let's talk about pricing once again. A German retailer called Media Market just spilled the beans on the regular Pixel 6's price, uh, showing that it'll be available for 649 euros and it'll actually come with a pair of Bose 700s if you pre-order with them. Now, this listing also confirms that the pre-orders will start on the same day on October 19th and will end on the 27th, like the leakers have mentioned before. Now, finally, in a sort of wild card kind of fashion, we have a sketchy rumor on other stuff we could be getting at this event. The tipster that goes by the name of AI claims that Google will announce the Pixel Watch, a Pixel Fold, and new Nest speakers, and he even throws the possibility of a Pixel tablet. And considering we don't really know this guy, let's just take this with a huge grain of salt. Fine, a truckload of salt. I'm just gonna quote Gary Oldman right now instead. Anyways, uh, in today's question, what do you want to see at that next Google event? Because honestly, I'm excited for the Pixels, I could be excited for the Pixel Watch if it's a thing that we haven't really seen, but I would be more excited about that Pixel Foldable for a ton of reasons, mainly because of how well Samsung has implemented it now. But that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social media. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me um, debate pixels but still want them please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw i'm jaime rivera thanks so much for watching we'll see you tomorrow